Hey, how's it going everyone? Just back again with another lesson. I just want to cover a couple topics. Um, first, uh, numerology and um, humility. And so um, just kind of made it made a few points, just things that I want to cover um, to reaffirm, you know, the Bible's true, and the very least something to look look into very, very deeply, seriously, in the times that we live in now. And so first point I want to make is related to um, numerology and numbers that I look for. Uh, first and foremost, I look for 33, 66, and 44 in the Bible everywhere. Uh, you know, and then it's interesting to make note of what it's talking about in those verses or chapter numbers or whatever. And so 33, generally speaking, to what I've noticed refers to like um, governing authorities on earth. And so, it's, you know, if you look in the Old Testament, I remember specifically when I went through it, some of the verses when 33 were referring to specifically like the officers and, you know, the legal system and all that. And then 66 will typically refer to destruction. <clears throat> and then 44 will refer to God's elect, you know, or the law and then, you know, things that they will appreciate and understand the most. And so um, pay attention to those three numbers. I'm sure there's many other good ones to look out for 11, which I'm going to talk about here and 12 also. But um, Acts 111 I want people to know that this numerology stuff, it's just starting to become for me, just like really in my face and just flamboyant and um, amazing, you know, that um, there's internal consistency within the Bible in numerology and then um, out in the world. And so end times teacher who doesn't know anything about the Bible, he's just a clown, um, was joking around about my Revelation 9-11 um, teaching that that's the wool one because it's written right before wool one is described. He's like, yeah, whatever, you know, it's a joke or whatever. But it's again, I want people to know, like, it's obvious in the Bible. And then it's obvious in life now, you know, through people like who got through like people like Russian vids. It's so now the only question is, are those two worlds intersecting, you know, like the, the truth of the Bible, and then the truth of the, what's going on in the world. And, um, you know, we see this evil narrative playing out. Um, and so are those two worlds going to quote, unquote, collide, and I believe they will very, very soon. It's, it can't be a coincidence, literally, at this point. And so, you know, it's very important, you know, to, to, to know this and then to uh, God will use these things, you know, to reaffirm to us that um, that his word is true, you know, and um, very carefully constructed, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, man has definitely manipulated in the sense that when they read it and then they project it out, they only take certain verses or don't go into it, uh, you know, in any depth or anything like that, or then use it for financial gain, emotional gain and all that. So... That's for sure, but the structure of the Bible is something to be uh, taken into account, <clears throat> you know, and then it, it helps us link things together, which is what I'm going to talk about first here with Acts 111. So first of all, I would say this, um, this uh, connection debunks um, really almost all of anybody who reads the Bible. And I don't say that arrogantly, but I don't know anybody else who's teaching this and it's obvious to me that this is the case and it's trustworthy, not just because the numerology, but just what we see going on in the world, which is the most important thing. We should always correlate any teaching. Is it matching what's real, you know, and what we experience uh, individually and collectively. But Acts 1, 10 to 11 reads, and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men by them in white apparel, sorry, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, two men, two individuals which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up into heaven, sorry, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. This is another verse of reincarnation. This reincarnation is everywhere. People have trouble with it. I don't think the Bible is for you. You know, I'm not saying that to be rude, but that's just what it is. Um, find another find another religion, I guess. If I don't know why a person would have issues with anything that the Bible teaches, because it's just what the Bible teaches. But if that really rubs you the wrong way, I'm pretty sure that this is not for you. Um, but anyway, this is another example of reincarnation because these um, ye men of Galilee are being told by these two men in white apparel, which symbolizes righteousness, holiness, um, that this exact scene is going to play out again. So that means that they have to be on earth again. They have to be looking up and then it up would be Christ. And then if they look down, they would have to see two men there in white, you know, and, um, uh, white apparel, you know, which represents, like I said, holiness. So they have to see two holy men standing there. And so um, we're told in Revelation 11 what they'll actually be wearing. It's sackcloth to represent humility because God uses things that the world would not consider powerful or righteous or anything to shame the world. You know, and in this case, in Revelation 11, to be 
to, um, you know, send plagues onto the earth that are written in Revelation 16. So the reason I want to talk about numerology is why is that verse in 11, Acts 1, 11? So I want people to know this is where God speaks to us directly and tells us, you know, he doesn't necessarily um, have angels visit us at night. And obviously, I'm sure he's doing that, you know, with people around the uh, flat earth. But uh, he uses these encodings, you know, and then he gives us the keys to unlock them. And so when I read this, I'm like, well, why is Acts 1, 10 and 11, you know, uh, in that verse? Why is it 11 instead of 12 or 5 or 3 or any other number? And so... This is not the only proof, obviously, that Acts 1.11 is referring to Revelation 11, which is my point, and I know this now. Most importantly, I correlate it with reality because if you look at the responsibility and the level of righteousness that's described to those people in Revelation 11 and here in Acts 1.11, um, it's high. And so no one on earth can do this. You know, it's not even a shot to any individuals or anything, but no one. And so these are supernatural, very, very... Uh, righteous entities uh, that are described in Revelation 11 and then also described here because they just appeared out of nowhere and then they disappeared and so like they're not like man so to speak they're from God you know from the most high and so they're very sacred you know just like Christ is sacred obviously and so <clears throat> it's not anybody on earth and so for the people that can accept and I think a lot of people can <laughs> just based on looking around the world um, Revelation 11 has not happened in the past it's definitely not happening now looking around the world because everybody reading the Bible are just stupid. And so, um, or using it for some financial gain or just literally, literally they're all, most of them are ball earthers and um, that kind of thing. And so this has to be in the future. And so this is what I was told at the first day of this year is that these two verses are connected, you know? And so don't believe it just because I said it, but look at the Bible and then, you know, look at, like I said, the world most importantly, and just know that Revelation 11 has not happened yet. And so when it does happen, it's going to fulfill Acts 1.11 as well. And so that's the connection, you know. And so God uses numerology. Revelation 9.11 is referring to the 9.11 event, you know, whatever people want to describe that as. But that's officially when we were under a one world government. And um, it was known to us, you know. And I hear stories every day about people who talk about coming into the quote unquote truth. I was listening to Zoom Truths um, premiere last night and the guy he was talking to was like yeah 9-11 woke me up you know and I was just like that inconsistencies and all that it's like that is a major event of deception but the reciprocal God used that to um wake people up you know and all that kind of stuff and so um you know that represents the the first woe you know and that kind of thing and so just know that you know like so numerology is extremely important and then it helps us read the bible and interpret the bible and so um, Acts 111 is not coincidentally numbered that way, where it's talking about two men explaining what's going to happen when Christ returns. And so know that. And so the fulfillment of Acts 111 is Revelation 11. Those two men that are standing there are in the return, the reciprocal event, Revelation 11 fulfilled. And so know that. And so the only people that will know that are the people that are said here, ye men of Galilee. There's a small group of people. They would have had to have seen Christ leave and then they would know things about Christ, you know, and then teach Christ properly, not all the nonsense that people are teaching that he was born of man and woman and um, he made a ball earth and uh, all the stuff that Tahar and the people at GMS and all the Hebrew Israelites, the majority of the leaders teach just nonsense, just flat out nonsense. And so just know that we'll know the people that are teaching the Bible by what they're, their fruit, you know, and, and that kind of thing. And so not writing books on the age of <laughs> age of consent and telling people to obey the government, like Obadiah's judgment and all that. These people are clowns. They're just agents, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And so they'll never talk about what Christ actually taught, you know, and then the humility that's required to be somebody that would even want to hang around Christ for more than a day. The only people that want to hang around Christ for more than a day are these people that are written here in Acts 1, 10 and 11. Ye men of Galilee. They literally followed him around. And when he was leaving, they're like staring in the sky. Like they, they, they want him to come back, you know, that kind of thing. And so um, know that. And so that's a very, very important person to those people that are staring up in the sky, you know, intently. And so just know that, you know, and, and if I'm anxious for Christ's return, how much more are they, you know, and that's the level that I want people to understand in my channel is that if I have this fervor and urgency and I consider myself just a mildly righteous person, how intently are these individuals who are now here back on earth, according to this verse as well, <clears throat> and many, many other verses in the Bible, um, Revelation 1, 7, all eyes will see him, even those who pierced him. So even the people that crucified him, they're also back on this earth right now. 
And so just know that, you know, all these people, a majority of them teaching the Bible are crucifying Christ spiritually because they crucified Christ physically in the past. And so just know that it may be hard to believe because you're like, well, why would they teach the Bible? But they're teaching obvious lies. And so God uses is using predominantly his left hand side to prophesy in these days <clears throat> until the two witnesses are here. And so that's why he's doing it through like movies and all these like actors, Ken Hovind, Pastor Anderson, the Hebrew Israelites, your local pastor list goes on. So just know that that's um, all by design. Mark Sargent, all these people like God is using his left hand side to trickle down information to his right hand side. And it's only coming down to individuals. Just know that. And so um, obviously what I teach is not true unless it actually happens. But I mean, it's looking looking like it is at this point. So <clears throat> um, numerology is extremely important. Uh, and when if you know, I, I think I'm going to go through the Bible again. And uh, I may actually compile all those things. And so that might be my last sort of contribution. It's not necessarily prophecy per se, but it's more like an internal um, collection of uh, coincidences. <laughs> and so like, I'm sure I'm gonna find a long list of, even if I just took those three numbers that I mentioned, 33, 66, and 44, and made a list, you know, of all the references that those refer to things like Freemasonry or leadership, 33, and then, um, 66 will refer to destruction and then 44 will, will refer to righteousness, you know, and, um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, it's, it's going to be a, a, a long list, you know, of, uh, of quote unquote coincidences. And so just know that, um, 44 is a very, very important number. And even, you know, people like Jay-Z and all these people who, you know, um, uh, you know, label their album 444 and something to make a story like, oh, you know, that's when he woke up in the morning and came up with a song or something like these people. God's left hand side knows the significance of those numbers. And so know that 44 is a very, very cool, righteous number in the Bible. And so, uh, like I said, 66 is destruction and 33 is usually referred to like governing bodies on Earth. And so <clears throat> uh, that's everywhere. And so here. The link was made and God told me this, that 11, Acts 1, 11 is Revelation 11. And so just know that. If that's not true, um, then everything I taught was wrong. And, and I would regret being in the Bible because then I would have led up to this quote unquote crescendo. And then this is my main contribution, I would say. And uh, it was wrong. And so the Bible was not for me to, to teach. And so, but again, I want people to know this little connection, I would say with the numbers is just like a cherry on top that... First of all, Revelation 11 has not happened yet. It could not have happened yet. And it's literal. <clears throat> but it's going to happen very soon if the Bible is true. And so if the Bible is true, then I'm very certain at this point, not, not saying this to be arrogant, that uh, what I teach is correct, for sure. That there has to be two men standing here in you in the USA, which is Mystery Babylon. And um, for 1260 days, not a day less or a day more, or else the Bible is wrong and I'm definitely wrong. 1260 days enacting the plagues in Revelation 16. That's it. And so, you know, that's that's what the Bible says. And so it sounds outlandish to a lot of people, but uh, not to me, um, more and more every day. So let's read Revelation 11, three. And again, for those numerology people, 11, three is 33, if you multiply them. And then it's saying here, and I'll give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand, 203 score days clothed in, sack clothed in sackcloth. So remember I said 33 refers to governing rulership on this earth look what they're told look what we're told um that they're given power and so right in uh, verse 6 again 11 6 66 destruction these have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will is that a coincidence that is in verse 11 6 66 and then 33 11 3 is Told that we're, they're given power over the earth. Like I said, that's what that number represents. Are these coincidences? I'm asking uh, scholars like End Times Teacher and Obadiah's Judgment, all these actors, why aren't you teaching these things? I want people to know, and I'm not saying this to be arrogant, but if people call me Satan, which they're free to, because that's their opinion, they're on an other team. I'm not going to go and like, you know, like whatever, like everything's okay and all that. You guys can go and be on another team. That's fine. My channel is for people who maybe want to join my team, you know, and my team is the, is under the guide, guidance of the God of the Bible. And so that's it. 
And so there's no middle ground anymore at all. And so if people want to go and say that, whatever, I don't care. I literally don't care, but um, that's not the, that's not what we're the times that we're in right now. And so what I teach my life is behind it, you know? And again, I would say for a lot of people, there's a lot of good reasons, many, many, many new ones every day to put your life behind and really underneath the guidance and um, coverage and protection of the God of the Bible. You know, this numerology is a bit of icing on the cake, but it still tastes good, <laughs> so to speak. Um, it's still amazing, you know, that uh, that God would do this and have this much um, amazing construction within the Bible. These are not coincidences. I'm saying this a bit sarcastic. These are not. Just know that God gives us eyes to see the Bible in a new way in the days that we live in now and, and in the world. You know, God is just giving out information freely. And these are the quote deeper things, I would say, but subtle, but amazing nonetheless. And so <clears throat> two witnesses, it's not anybody in the past. It's not anybody left behind or anything like that. Nothing like that it has nothing to do with the Christian church. It has nothing to do with these baboons on the street, these Hebrews, not, none of that. Nothing to do with me. These two witnesses are not here uh, at all. And so just know that. And so we know that the way they're going to be because of what it says in Revelation 11. And if any man will hurt them, why would go, why would anybody first of all want to hurt them? You know, and so we have to know that the world will hate what God puts here. That's obvious. We've seen that with Christ being crucified and it's no different in the days that we live in now. Verse five, and if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devour their, devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. And so just know that there's going to, they're going to be chastised, you know, and poked and prodded and all that kind of stuff. And then um, they will actually die. Uh, and when they, and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And so they are eventually going to die, you know? And so just know that there's, they're going to irritate the world enough that they're just going to get taken out. And so just know that, but it says the beast will do that. No individual that comes up to them, you know, and like, hey, what are you, what are you guys teaching? What are you guys doing? Um, they're not going to succeed, but the whole system will collectively hate them, you know, and then kill them. And then their bodies will lie in, in, in America. So just know that. That's what it's saying when it says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. This America is spiritually Sodom and Egypt and spiritually being uh, crucified Christ in the days that we live in now. Uh, with the 501c3 church and then now with the Hebrews on the street. Know that. They know that they're doing it too because they're teaching the non-virgin birth, which is obvious that um, Christ was born of, of uh, the Holy Spirit and Mary. And so they're actors, you know, and so I hope people know that by now. And so they're all involved in spiritually crucifying Christ in these days. And so um, just know that, you know, this is the, this is not the, the Hebrews or anything like that. The world's not going to rejoice if anything happens to them or whatever, because they don't have any power. No one cares like what they're teaching. They're all, again, they're all ball earthers. They're, they're, they're intermingling with this system perfectly. It's like pulling teeth just to get anybody in the, that movement to declare wearing a mask or any of that is a sin. Cause like then we're all sitting right now. And so it's just impossible for them to say that. And so all the other things that were everybody's required to do to sit even before that's cool Corolla thing, they won't say anything like that because they're just agents of the government, you know, and just know that. So um, that's hopefully very, very obvious to people. And so they're not going to be those men in Acts 1, 10 and 11, ye men of Galilee. That's not them. Those men are, first of all, looking up all the time and they care about God's laws over everything, you know, and so the, over their life, which doesn't even matter um, because, um, they know that that we're in hell and so they also won't teach that even though that's very obvious in the bible and so they're false prophets on many 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 levels but um just know that and then so uh this has not happened yet and so this is what i'm waiting for this is the only thing i'm waiting for <clears throat> and so uh one personal story for me i was like filing my unemployment claim yesterday because it's every other week on a monday and so the last um little bit that I have, I have like 3,500 left in the, in the account or whatever. And then I couldn't get it out because, um, uh, the unemployment rate is below 10% now. And so they stopped that program because once it goes below 10, there's this other thing, you know, once it's above 10, this other thing kicks in this extension. And so that got cut because of these fudge numbers. And so 
I just wanted to confirm with them. So I called them and I was happy about it. Cause I was like, well, that's good. That means that's about, you know, maybe like a month or so of expenses for me. I was like, great. I was like, good. So that's one month less that I don't have to be here. And so we have this attitude now. So if I do, what do those people in Acts 110, what are they thinking? If I'm thinking this. And so, um, you know, just know that. Why are all these other channels like End Times Teacher and all that? Why is he only doing prepping stuff? We're not supposed to prep excessively and all that kind of stuff. What's prepping going to do? What are you going to like? Um, everybody else is starving, but you have a year's worth of food. And you're just going to sit there and eat for a year and do what? And so we know we have to sin right now. And so we're not prepping for anything. If there's a food shortage for like more than two days and I can't survive on it, that's it. It's good, perfect. You know, that's excellent for me. And so uh, we're not in this, I'm not in this for tithes or anything like that. You know, the, the people of God want the truth to go out. And then it was received for quote unquote free. God didn't charge me for this understanding on Acts 1, 10 and 11 and Revelation. He didn't like, hey, you know, you know like uh, send me an invoice. <laughs> hey, hey, Jirog, like you, you owe me like 50 bucks because of what I taught you or whatever. If this stuff comes true. Um, that's not the way God works. So we receive freely from God and directly from the most high and we give it out, you know. And so the people of God are more inclined to set up like reverse Patreons where they like pay people, you know, that need help, obviously. So know that it's not about ch uh, super chats and tithes and all this stuff like this world is completely stupid. You know, the people are lobbying, even religious people who have the Bible in hand and know some amount of it in depth to stay here longer when this is hell. End times teacher and all these people, the Hebrews in particular, they know the Bible really well, but they're like jockeying to stay here. You know, like, oh, no, there's going to be the chaos first, then the mark of the beast and then the then the world war. And then we're going to be like they're like they're hunkering down like they're. They're willing to sin more to stay in hell longer just for something, <laughs> you know, that doesn't make any sense. And so I want people to know God's elect 144,000. First of all, many of them are poor, you know, blind, lame and all that. Like I've done a lesson on salvation in the book of Jeremiah. They're not making plans and hunkering down. They don't have resources to do that. Even if they did, they don't care because they'll know that this place is completely evil and hell because Christ is not here. When Christ was taken away, all good was removed from this earth, literally. And so all they all they do is look up. You know, what else is there to do? Look around and then get comforted by these uh, animals who are reading the Bible? That's not the case. I want people to know that. So these words are going to come true. If the Bible is true and if they are, it's going to happen very, very soon. It has to. So um, pretty much this year and, and some amount of next year, um, I'll wait. You know, but I don't think it's righteous to wait too long, you know, and I'm, I believe I'm getting this understanding from God because why would God tell us that this is hell? You're required to wear a mask and act like a buffoon to stay here. Yeah, just whatever, you know, like, um, I'll come back to me in a few years and I'll give you a better sense of like when we're supposed to be, you know, when, when, when Christ is going to return, that's stupid, you know, that's insane. And so yeah, our earthly parents wouldn't do that, you know, like, come visit us, look around our house. Oh, you have like all these insane people around you and like scary um, perverts and pedophiles and stuff and be like, yeah, I'll just, you know, I'll come back in a year and kind of see how things, <laughs> things are working out for you and all that. Uh, that doesn't make sense. And the Bible says that if our earthly parents would not do that or not that disgusting, how's God going to do that? Does that make any sense? Uh, that doesn't make sense. And so um, just know that. And so it's uh, what I'm comforted by is not necessarily that I have this urgency, but it, like other people do and non-religious people do <laughs> like Glenn Beck, who's like obviously like a shill, uh, you know, he's talking about how this is a wrap and stuff. And so and how evil is just completely permeating the entire earth, which hopefully is very, very obvious to people. And so um, just know that, you know, and so I'm if the Bible is true, I know that Acts 1 11 and Revelation 11 are linked. I know that for a fact, like I would I wouldn't ever bet on anything in the Bible, but that's what it is. It's just a fact. And so um, the only way the Bible is not true if these things don't come to pass, you know, and come to pass soon. And so um, that's just what it is. That's the amazing thing about the times that we live in now is we can literally go to every book and chapter in the Bible that refers to the end times and say, when is this going to happen? And like explain it to me, you know, and like make it make sense. And so that's the exciting thing. I think um, it's such an amazing time that we live in now that and I don't say this to be rude to God, but the God of the Bible, the Bible itself is in a corner, you know, it it's just put itself in a corner. And I believe that it wants us to go to that corner and just know that. But I want people to know as well. Um, think about this as well. That is also required to understand these things that um, God teaches in the Bible is that uh, we're all required as people into the Bible to make this walk of shame, you know? And so 
you know, that can be used in a lot of different contexts. But like our walk of shame is walking from wherever we are all the way past a bunch of sinners, you know, and evil people. And so, and just walk to the lowest point. And so we're going to walk past people who we have not maybe committed the sins that they have in the physical or even thought about them, but we have to walk past them, you know, and go all the way to the end of the table. And I want people to know that's not for very, very many people because it's not even taught, much less people going in that direction. And so go there, you know, go there fervently. Don't listen to these people um, who are using the Bible as a business and like, you know, I'm better. Look at all these, oh, my people and like, oh, my people are destroyed and like, you know, trying to... Uh, you know, talk down to people when they're completely out of their mind and stupid. Don't listen to these idiots. Just that's what the Bible teaches. Hopefully that's obvious to anybody that we're required to take the lowest seat. And then God will then decide what is the appropriate seat, whether we should even be at the table. He'll kick us out if he wants, if we're not dressed, you know, in the right clothing. And there's verses that talk about that. Or he'll exalt us to a different position wherever he wants us to be. But we have to go to the lowest. Why does the Bible say that? Because God is at the end of the table. That's what God hides himself in. The poor, we have to walk past all these other people and be humble enough to then meet God at the end of the table. And so we have to walk past all these sinners, you know, and, and say, I'm worse than all of them and know that, you know. And so people like End Times Teacher, they're possibly have started off in a righteous path, but then they'll see Tahar and all these baboons tell them, hey, come on over here. We got few truths over here and then we got these other group of people who kind of follow us and we can kind of make fun of Esau and all that kind of stuff and then he'll get lured in you know he got suckered into that room on the way potentially down that path Obadiah's judgment is the same good servant is the same they're getting lured in by all these different groups you know for example good servant is the 501c3 which is insane to me because he's a a flat earther but that's just what it is you know he's just an actor but like like from an earthly perspective this is the way we can think of this is that they're getting lured in on the way down. I would just say bolt, blaze past all those stupid people, you know, and then accept that we are the lowest of the low. We have to walk past sinners who have committed, quote unquote, more sins than us or things that we haven't even thought about. But then I promise you that God will be at the end. And then the beautiful thing is when you're at the end and in a low position, the God of the Bible will be able to teach you things, you know, and for people who are already there, that's amazing. And then so I think the things that I teach are obvious to them. But then God can then use, quote unquote, use you and put information into your mind because then you will not go make a business out of it, you know, and you will not want to ever tell a lie. Um, you will never want to leave that place, you know, but you have to go past there. And the Christian church has circumvented this. Oh, it doesn't matter what works you do or it doesn't matter, you know, and then um, Tahar and all them will be like, oh, you, as long as you're in the quote, in the truth or whatever that even means, um, they've suckered people in. Some people who are genuinely on a righteous path They've lured them in, innocent people, and then they're going to have to face that judgment. The Bible says that it's better for them to have a millstone tied around their neck. So there's irony in their name. They give it away in their names. When Tahar puts a video up, says that he got his truth from the quote-unquote Jewish, he's telling us the truth. He's got all of his truth from the 501, 501c3 Christian Church, added a few onto it, and then packaged it, and then got on, ran out on the streets because it's a business. And so all these people on the streets are, why aren't you out on the streets and all that kind of stuff? They're essentially saying, why aren't you running a business? Uh, and the answer is because we're in hell. <laughs> and so we're not setting up any businesses or any like lemonade stand or whatever. We're trying to get out of here. And so we're looking up just like the, the men in uh, Acts 1, 10 and 11. We're looking up every day, you know, in a realistic sense that this that Christ will return and in, in excitement and anticipation. So know that. So don't use the metrics these retards use. Um, they're literally out of their mind and they don't know anything about the Bible. What I taught here will be like shocking to them when it's just obvious that, that that's the case. Uh, that Acts 1.11 is referring to Revelation 11, you know, and then not, Revelation 9.11 is referring to 9.11, you know, and that kind of thing. This is like a big mystery <laughs> to these people um, and that kind of thing. So God is just essentially using them uh, to peddle lies and then that kind of thing. So just know that. So make that walk of shame, you know, it's okay, you know, whatever will get snickered a little bit here and there, but no one else is going to be making it. So after you start for a little while, what I've noticed, no one else is going to be around. And I'm not saying this to be arrogant, but like after a little bit, no one else is going to be around. They're, they're just going to run away. When you say, oh, no, I'm a worse sinner than all these people and all that kind of stuff. Like people will be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about religious people. They won't want to be around you. And then they'll be like, no, no, we're not going into that kind of stuff. Uh, no, we're better than all these people and all this kind of stuff. You know, death to them and all that kind of thing. Those are part, those are in the Bible, but those are God's judgments, not mine. And so know that. And so we're not supposed to rejoice over 
um, other people's destruction because that destruction could very easily land on us. And so until we see that we're exempt and then God does it to those other people potentially and then he explains why, you know, and that kind of thing. And sometimes it's just he just decides, you know, that's just what it is. And so we have to always leave that as, a, as an option. And so a lot of these people are actually heaping more and more judgment over their own head. And so we can't do that, you know? And so that's why you, for me, especially, I have to tread very, very lightly, but I would say the beautiful thing now, like I said, the God of the Bible is in an extreme corner and this is an exciting time. I want people to be as excited as I am that this year and next year, I mean, that's it, you know, for me personally. And then, um, you know, after that, I will be a Bible skeptic, I would say. You know, not antichrist, but I'll be skeptical. Certainly skeptical of my uh, interpretation, but um, God is running out of time, you know, for sure. Because the Bible says that Christ told, tells us that he's going to return during a calm time where people are still getting into marriage. So all this stuff that people are seeing kind of coming down is is not allowed to happen, you know, until Christ returns and does this exchange in Acts 1, 10 and 11. So uh, that's the next quote, big thing to look out for according to my channel numerology supports it and um you know i put it out there for people to just consider are these just coincidences is all this numerology just a coincidence and so um for me just as a mathy person it's looking less and less like a coincidence just like in mathematics a lot of solutions have symmetry and a lot of elegant things when you come up with a solution after you've solved it you're like whoa okay that that's why it worked you know and stuff this is the same you know and so this is um a cherry on top for a lot of people, but um, a tasty cherry nonetheless. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.